Hello and welcome to another tutorial in this series called Stable Diffusion for Professional Creatives. So since releasing the tutorial on how to use Stable Diffusion and Photoshop together, I've received some requests about controlling the outcome better so that the subject remains the same, and other ways to implement that workflow in commercial environments. So how about I do just that, huh? How would you like it? This is especially useful for product photography, still life, advertising and creative directors, but it can also be applied to a lot of other areas. As this tutorial expands on what you have already learned in a previous video, in case you missed it, I will leave the link to the video in the description below. The workflow file will have a lot of notes so that you can follow along and troubleshoot if necessary. As always, you can find the workflow file in the description below, as well as any other model you might need. This is the workflow that we will be using today. At its core, it's very similar to the one that we used previously, but with a few changes. The first big change is that we're not using LCM anymore, but we're using SDXL Lightning. Since SDXL Lightning came out a few weeks ago, it's been a game changer, at least in real-time productions. Another new thing that we're gonna use is the new IP adapter v2 nodes. It is not necessary and it slows down the generation a bit, so if you don't want to use it, you can just bypass it. But the start of the show is going to be the segment anything node. Segment anything is going to solve the issue that we had in the previous workflow, and that is that the resulting image would feature something that is really close to the original subject of the image, but it's not quite the same. With segment anything, we can isolate the subject and then place it back in its original position. So everything else but the subject is going to get changed, but the subject is going to remain the same. So without further ado, let's once again clear the board and start from scratch. First things first, we're going to need two models. The first is a checkpoint for SDXL Lightning and the other is a LoRa. Since we're going to work with realistic images, I'm using RealViz XL V4.0. More specifically, the Lightning model with the baked VAE. We're gonna download the model and place it in our checkpoint folder in ConfUI. As you can see, we've got some specific instruction for Lightning models. In order to use Lightning models, we have to use DPM++ SDE Kares or DPM++ SDE as a sampler, four to six steps, and CFG scale at one or two. We'd better keep these in mind when we later set up the case sampler node. The next thing we need is the SDXL Lightning LoRa. There's a lot of different LoRa's here. It goes from one step to two steps to four steps and to eight steps. We need to decide on a number of steps that we're gonna use. You can also download all of them and then download the corresponding LoRa's. For this workflow, I'm using four steps. So I'm gonna download SDXL Lightning four step LoRa.SafeDancers and place it in the LoRa folder in ConfUI. Now that we got everything, the first thing we're gonna to do to build the workflow is load our checkpoint. So we're gonna search for our load checkpoint node and select our SDXL Lightning model. As we already know, we also need LoRa. So we're gonna search for the load LoRa node, select our SDXL Lightning four steps LoRa and hook both the model and the clip through the LoRa node. The model needs to go through the LoRa node because it works much in the same way as the LCM workflow. This LoRa has been trained in such a way that the case sampler can work in a very low number of iterations. The next thing we need, as always, dragging and dropping from model is a case sampler. So we're going to drag and drop and select that. Then we're going to need a clip text encode. We're going to duplicate the clip text encode, hook it up. The top one, as always, is going to be our positive prompt field, and the bottom one is going to be our negative field. And then we're going to hook up the conditioning from the top into the positive and the one from the bottom into the negative. The next thing we need is an empty latent image. So we're going to look for that. We're going to hook it up to the case sampler. And since we're working with SDXL, even if it's lighting, it's better to be working at 1024 by 1024. So we're going to input those numbers into the empty latent image node. And now we've got to remember the settings from the model page. As for steps, we're using four, since we're using the four steps LoRa. CFG, we're gonna go for one now. The sampler name is gonna be DPMPP2MSDE. And now this is very important. For Shadowler, we're gonna use SGM Uniform. It is very important that we put in SGM Uniform because otherwise SDXL Lightning won't generate anything good. We will be leaving Denoise at one and then we'll prepare our IP adapter workflow. 
Now IP adapter is completely optional, but in order to demonstrate a bit how it works in the new version, we're going to load up IP adapter advanced. This is the node for IP adapter version 2 advanced, and it works in a slightly different way from before. The first thing we need apart from this node is the unified loader, so we're going to look for IP adapter unified loader. Here we can see there's a few inputs and outputs. The input is rather simple, it's just a model, so we're going to hook up the model here. If we want to use a very specific version of IP adapter, we can input it here as well. But the thing that I'm going to do is just select it from this window here. For this one, instead of going with plus, which is the usual choice, we're going with bit G since it's the fastest in my testing. You are free to use another one if you want to. Then we're going to hook up the model output from the unified loader and put it into the model input in the IP adapter advanced node. And we're going to do the same for the IP adapter output into the IP adapter input. And then we're going to hook up the model output from the IP adapter advanced node and hook it up into the case sampler. So now the model goes all the way from checkpoint to LoRa to unified loader to IP adapter advanced and then onto the case sampler. The last thing that we need for the IP adapter advanced node is a load image node. So we're going to look for a load image node and then hook it up to the image input. IP adapter v2 is different from v1 in a few different things, but one thing that doesn't need anymore is a clip vision model. It already has a clip vision model inside, and if you want to use a different one, you're free to hook it up, but otherwise it can just use the one from the unified loader as well. In my case, I'm not going to load up a clip vision model, and I'm just going to use the one that it comes with. The IP adapter node is going to be useful if we have reference images that we'd like to use. In my case, I'm going to load up a reference image of my liking. So now the reference image is going to influence the end result. But the weight is a bit too high for me, as well as the weight type, as I don't want the final image to be too influenced by the IP adapter. So I'm going to lower the weight to 0.3 and I'm going to change the weight type to is in and out. So what this workflow does up till now is that it generates a picture that is similar to the reference image that we feed into the IP adapter. But we want to do two things. We don't want a similar picture, we want the same subject as the original picture, and we want the generated picture to occupy the same space and have the same proportions as the one that we're using as reference. So let's solve the proportion and positioning issue at first. In order to do that, we can use a control net. So we're going to search for apply control net and select our node. Now that we have a control net, we need the positive conditioning to go through the control net as well before going over to the case sampler. After we hooked up the conditioning, we're going to hook up a control net model. In order to do that, drag and drop from the control net input and select the control net loader node. Since we're using STXL, we want to be wary of two things. One, that control net models are different from 1.5. I will leave a link to the correct models in the description below. And two, that since we're working in Photoshop in real time with stable diffusion, we want to use as lightweight a model as possible. So in my case, I'm going to use a control lower adapt rank 128.safe tensor. While there's more precise models, they weigh a ton more. And I want to be as lightweight as possible in order to have fast generation times. Now the next thing we need to fit into the control net is an image. And since we want to work with Photoshop, you guessed it, we're going to use the Photoshop to come for UI node. So we're going to look for that. And what this node does, it's basically taking the currently active picture in Photoshop and dropping it into ConfUI. But before fitting this picture into our apply control net node, we want to resize this picture so it's not too big. In order to do so, drag and drop and search for image resize node. And then I'm going to resize it to 1024 by 1024. And now that it's resized, we need to extract a depth map. In order to do that, search for the depth anything node. This is a very good node to extract depth from images. We're going to hook that up to the image resize node and then finally hook it up to the apply control net node. So 
Now our workflow takes an image from Photoshop, generates an image that has the same depth as the picture in Photoshop, and the generated picture is also influenced by our reference picture that goes through the IP adapter node. What we need now is a way to isolate the subject of our original picture and place it on top of the generated picture. Since the generated picture is going to have the same spatial coordinates as the one that we're working with in Photoshop, the two picture, our picture and the generated picture, can be seamlessly overlaid. In order to do that, we're going to search for something called Segment Anything. So we're going to search for Segment Anything and our node is going to be Grounding Dino Sam Segment. Now why is it called Grounding Dino Sam Segment? Well that's because it uses two models. A SAM model, SAM stands for Segment Anything, and a Grounding Dino model. The SAM model will be taking care of segmenting the image into the subject and the rest, and the Grounding Dino model is going to take care of understanding what the subject is. In this node, we can see that we need three different things as inputs. Let's start with the easy one. And the image that we need is the one that we're working with in Photoshop right now. So we're going to drag from the image resize image output and drop it into the image input in the grounding dino sam segment node. So drag and drop from sam model and select sam model loader. Do the same from grounding dino model and select grounding dino model loader. Now, since we're trying to generate in real time while we're working in Photoshop, we want to use a lightweight model. So we're going to use a very lightweight model, such as same HQ with B, which is only 300 megabytes. And same for Grounded Dino, we're going to use the smallest model possible. There are better models with better quality, but we're going for fast, we're not going for good. The only thing that the Grounded Dino SAM segment node needs is a prompt. In this case, it needs a description of the subject. Since I'm working on a watch image, I'm just going to type watch. If you're working on a different image or subject, you can just change the prompt to reflect whatever image you're working on. This can be anything really, a person, different body parts, an item of clothing, an animal, the background, the foreground, whatever. But since sometimes if the image is kind of difficult to understand or the subject is quite cryptic, it doesn't work that well, we just want to drag and drop from the image output and select the preview image node. By doing this, we can check that the resulting image is the subject that we want. Now this image in the preview image node is going to be a segmented image of our original image that we're working on in Photoshop. But we don't want that, at least not now. We want the mask. So we're going to drag and drop from mask and search for mask to image. Again, in order to check that everything is working correctly, we're going to drag and drop from image and select the preview image node, so that we can have some troubleshooting going on if necessary. And now, the only thing that we want is to blend two images together, or better, to overlay one image on top of the other. We have our generated image that is being generated by the case sampler, and we have the image that we're working on in Photoshop that is being segmented live by the segment anything node. In order to do that, we want to search for a blend node. So let's type in blend. And since we want to blend by mask, let's add by mask. And there it is, an image blend by mask node. Now we need to decode the image that has been generated. So we're going to drag and drop from latent and search for the VAE decode node. We're going to hook up the VAE from the checkpoint node. And we're going to drag and drop from the image output and select the preview image node. And then, since we want to blend these two images together, we want to drag and drop from the image output node into image A in the blend by mask node, drag and drop from the segment anything node image output into image B in image blend by mask, and then use the mask that we generated from the mask to image node that comes from the segment anything node, and we're going to hook it up as a mask in the image blend by mask node. And then we want to set the blend percentage to 1. Now what we want to do is just drag and drop from the image output, select preview image. I'm going to place it right beside the preview image for the generated image just in order to show you the difference between the two. And then the last node we need is the pop-up node for the Photoshop to come for UI node. So we're going to drag and drop from the image output, 
that is the result of the blending, and then search for pop-up. And this will create a window that is going to be staying beside us in Photoshop. This window will display the result of the blending of the generated image and the image that we're working in in Photoshop while we're working in Photoshop in real time. So, now we are in Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is going to edit, remote connection, select remote connections and enable our remote connections here and set up a password that is the same as the one that we have in our Photoshop to Comfy UI node. In my case, that's 1234, 1234. We can click OK and check that it's the correct one by going to our Photoshop to Comfy UI node and check the password. 1234, 1234. Now that the connection is working, we're gonna go to our Comfy UI side panel, enable extra options, enable auto queue and queue prompt. If everything goes correctly, we're gonna see our Photoshop to Comfy UI node light up and then go through all of the steps that are needed in order to generate the image. And as we can see, the connection is working and everything is working properly. The pop-up has well popped up and the images are being generated. A few things are happening, let's go look at them. As you can see here, the Segment Anything node is recognizing the subject, that is, a watch. Isolating it, creating a mask, and then passing the mask onto the Image Blend by Mask node. On the other hand, here, the control net is recognizing the image and creating a depth map. It's passing the depth map onto the case sampler, and the case sampler is generating an image that has the same depth as the image that we're using in Photoshop. And finally, the Image Blend by Mask node is blending the two images so that the surrounding is the one from the generated image and the subject is the one that we want to remain the same. Now, if we want to influence the generations, let's say we want to have a watch stand on a white surface, we can influence that by going over to our positive and negative prompt fields. So for positive, I'm going to go with advertising photography of a luxury watch on a white surface. And for negative, I'm going to go with illustration 3D render. And as you can see, once the cycle has been completed, the background is going to be new and it's going to be white, as we said in the prompt. If we want the generation to go faster, since now they're quite slow, we can just select the API adapter advanced node and bypass it. This way, the model will go through the lower and bypass the IP adapter node and just go straight into the case sampler and it's going to be much faster. Now, going back to Photoshop, we can work on the image without breaking the workflow. The first thing we're going to do is call up the pop-up and set it in place. And then, if we want to move around the subject, let's say we're going to move around both the subject and the shadow, resize them and place it wherever we want, we can absolutely do that and the resulting picture will be reflecting all the changes that we're making. So let's say we want to duplicate the subject, move it around, tilt it so that there's two objects, one leaning on top of the other, bring it down so this one behind the other and then move around the shadow so that it works better in our new composition. We can absolutely do that and the resulting image will be reflecting that. Obviously, we're going to have to work a bit so that the blending is better. In this case, we're going to go over to the mask and just mask it around. And as you can see, the resulting image now is much, much better. We're always going to have a few hallucinations here and there. But what we're looking for really now is just generating images fast and loose so that we can see how our vision comes to life in real time without the need for excessive editing in Photoshop. So let's change the prompt from on a white surface to, let's say, in a forest. And let's see what happens. There we go. Let's do the same for snow or a mountain. On a snowy mountain. There it is. There we go. We got a good advertising photography right there in a matter of seconds. And then we got a variant, and then we'll get another one in a few seconds as well. But why stop at watches? We can just do a person instead. So let's bring this up, go over to our Comfy UI nodes, and let's change the prompt from a luxury watch 
too. That's working quite the same, but let's do things properly. Advertising photography of a young woman on a snowy mountain. And then I'm gonna change the subject from watch to woman. Yeah, you can see that it's generating a watch here instead. And now the woman is on the mountain. In this case though, we have an error of sorts with the segment anything note. It is not properly an error because we asked for a woman, but the thing is, it's thinking that the headpiece is not part of the woman. We can fix that by changing up the prompt or the threshold. Or if we like the result, we can just leave it like that. If we like the crazy hair, that is. And then, same as before, we can keep doing whatever we want with the picture inside of Photoshop while Sable Diffusion takes care of the generations and overlaying our subject into the generated picture. So, for example, if we want to change the position of the subject, we can absolutely do that. So adding a bit of content aware to fill up the frame and then fixing the edges a bit as well, we're going to do that. So while we're working on the image in Photoshop, Stable Diffusion is working in the background. So in this case, let's say we want to select the subject, isolate it from the background, and then work on the background only, let's say with an adjustment layer, we're gonna add some depth to it, for example, we're gonna work with the gradient in order to do so on the mask, and as we can see, Stable Diffusion should take care of the new perceived depth that is being applied by ControlNet. There you go, now we have more depth, we have more isolation, from the subject to the background. Or let's say that we want to paint some mountains as well. Let's go with a brush tool and then we're gonna select a color, let's say some nice brown, and then paint some mountains in the background, fill it in, and then for example, fill in the sky in the background and have some clouds. And the great thing about this is that we don't need to be as precise in Photoshop as we should be normally. We can just keep drawing things or adding things in new layers, adding depth, adding stuff, and Stable Diffusion is gonna take care of the rest in the background in real time. Now, I don't think I need to explain to you how incredibly powerful all of this is. Before you leave, I've been asked about some troubleshooting about this workflow and the pop-up node. If the pop-up node is not working for you, you have two roads ahead of you. One, you can just resize the window in which ConfUI is working to the preview image node size and just leave it beside Photoshop. I know that's not a great solution, but that's basically the same thing that the pop-up node is doing anyway. And for the other solution, I will leave a location in your ConfUI folder and a command prompt in the description below. You can try that, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, it's very hard to pinpoint what the issue is for some of you, since the majority of you seem to have no issues with this, and the ones who are having issues seem to be on specific hardware or software versions that kind of conflict with one another. So try both of those. If any of those work for you, that's great. Otherwise, let me know, and I will see if I find any other solution. That will be all for today. I am Andrea Baglioni. You can find me on Instagram at Rizunabushi or on the web at andreabaglioni.com. As always, any like and subscribe does help a lot since this is a new channel and I'll be seeing you next week.